Okay, so today we're going to be showing you how to make petri dishes using mason jars. Um, petri dishes are a very valuable tool for many reasons in mycology, such as to test out cultures for contamination, cloning fruits, germinating spores, isolating genetics, and even for breeding new varieties. They are often referred to as agar plates. It definitely takes a bit of a learning curve, but this valuable tool will help you mitigate all kinds of issues you might run into when playing with mycelium. Once you've gained some experience with petri dishes, everything else will seem easy. There are a ton of recipes for making petri dishes, they all will have different applications, depending on what you're trying to achieve with them. Now, most recipes will call for agar, agar powder, and a source of sugar to feed the mycelium and to aid in its growth. A typical recipe is 500 milliliters water, 10 grams agar agar, and 10 grams light malt extract. Most competition will likely benefit from the sugar source, so in some cases, water agar is made without adding the additional sugar source, which in turn prevents any contamination from th thriving in the jars. This technique will allow you to further isolate the culture you desire away from any contamination present in most spores, wild mushrooms, and other clones that you might be um, using. Some growers also add different forms of supplementation to the mix to allow for additional nutrition, which will be used in the final applications. This technique allows the mycelium to train itself to produce enzymes necessary to break certain things down. Food coloring is often added to help differentiate contamination from the mycelium, but this is also not necessary. So today we have our jars here. I've measured how much agar we need by simply putting a tablespoon of water into the jar and then seeing where it comes up on the jar. And I'm pretty satisfied with the amount in there and that's um, what we'll be using. So that's 15 milliliters per jar. Okay, so I've just pre-boiled my filtered water here and I've measured it out afterwards to ensure that it's the correct amount of water and we haven't lost any to evaporation. I've measured out 200 milliliters and you can also do that by weighing out 200 grams of water. One milliliter is equal to one gram of water. So now that it's fully boiled, we have also pre-weighed our sugars for the mix and we're going to be using light malt extract today and agar. Um, it's going to be four grams of each. Okay, so now that we're boiled, go in. And now we're going to want to stir constantly until we see everything bubbling. Okay, now you can see the agars thicken quite a bit. And um, it's going to form a lot of bubbles when I stop stirring it for a second. So that's when I know it's ready, and I'm going to go prepare my jars quickly and transfer it over. Okay, now I'm going to stir up the mixture and begin to fill my jars, roughly 15 milliliters per. Okay, now that our liquid agar mix has completely cooled, we'll be ready to put the lids on. So as you can see, that's about as much agar as I want in the jar. And then for the lids themselves, we're going to be placing them upside down because um, this will allow them not to form a complete seal as they would on the other side there and also will allow for any air to escape. So I'll show you how I do it. I like to put them on and leave them a little bit loose to allow for that oxygen to escape. Then we're going to cover each one with a little tin foil lid to keep water or steam from going into the jar. Now they're ready for the pressure cooker. Okay, here are my completed jars and I'm going to begin stacking them inside the Instant Pot. I've placed the trivet in there and I've put about a cup of water and now we'll just stack them all too high. Okay, so we've managed to fit all of the Petri dishes inside the Instant Pot. We've stacked them too high and we've made sure that the Instant Pot is level. That way, when the agar melts during the pressure cook, once it cools, it will be evenly distributed in the jars. We're now going to turn on the pressure cooker and we're going to put it on high pressure for 33 minutes. That seems to be plenty of time to sterilize the agar as well as for liquid culture. Close the lid 
and then we're going to let it do its thing. Okay, now that the Instant Pot is on and running, we're going to let it do its thing. Once the cycle is complete, we're going to let the Instant Pot cool overnight. Once it's completely cool, we're going to open up the lid and seal each one of the jars. Because we've left a little bit of the seal open to allow that airflow out, but we don't want that to happen now that it, it's sterile. So we're going to seal up the jars and we're going to pack them away, or you can use them immediately. They will last for months and they will continue to be sterile. Okay, best of luck. Thanks for watching. Enjoy.